We welcome you to another edition of Economic Forum where we discuss various issues affecting our economy in Zimbabwe. There's going to be issues to do with mining, to do with agriculture, tourism, education and even sports. We discuss all these and see how we can move forward as a country economically when we discuss with various guests who come to share their ideas and their experience. Today we shall be discussing agriculture. My name is John Masu. At times, market accessibility is a challenge for those who have worked so hard on their farms and then they face the difficulty of actually putting across their produce to the consumers. And this is what we're going to be discussing with Lindy Way. Pofu Mashasha, who is an entrepreneur, but uh, above all, an agriculturist, uh, and with uh, ventures in mining and other fields. Lindy, welcome to Economic Forum. Thank you very much. Maybe you can tell uh, the nation better uh, yourself about yourself. I like to consider myself a multifaceted um, entrepreneur who has divested interests in mining as well as agriculture. Agriculture is in my blood. I'm actually a third, fourth generation farmer. So this is a topic that is very dear to me and I'm very passionate about. I currently sit as the Vice President of the Business Economic Empowerment Forum and I double under the portfolio of agriculture as the agriculture governor. So I think, as you mentioned, um, you know, market is a big issue. I think that the government, um, through the arms of government, have done a spectacular job in trying to move forward Zimbabwe in terms of agriculture, because we are an agroeconomy. So a lot of um, emphasis and a lot of um, money is spent in this area by the country, but still, I do feel that there's areas that do warrant us to do even more than what we're currently doing. In fact, what you're saying, Lindy, is that we have all these facilities that government has availed to us, but we're not fully utilizing them. At times, we're not even fully away. And you've just mentioned the marketing authorities and so forth. You can go on, on how the public, especially those in agriculture, can utilize these facilities. Um, I do believe that there's been very little effort made by us as um, individual farmers to go to the next level of actually looking into our markets and seeing what's available to us, be it through authorities like AMA, be it through authorities like Zimtrade. I'll have you know that there has been sufficient number of um, there's been a sufficient number of contracts and deals that have been signed by Zimbabwe with other countries, even of recent. Um, if we talk about the citrus agreement that we recently signed with the Chinese, we're now certifying to move citrus fruits over. Obviously, um, the authorities are in a better position and to go into the actual processes and procedures. But the fact of the matter is that we as individual Zimbabweans are still not talking about it with excitement. Nowhere in the press do you see um, cooperatives talking about what are we going to do about this, how are we going to coordinate together as Zimbabweans or even on an individual basis. Uh, look at Zambia. We have an instance where the president had requested the people there to plant citrus trees within their gardens. But what happens is that when you put all that fruit together, you have a good tonnage across the country that can then be moved to the countries that require it. And I think Zimbabwe is in need of those type of models. In fact, Zimbabwe is at a far better advantage because of the fact that we have been given other land, for starters, and so we have easier access to land, good arable land, good soils, although we are having a challenge with our soil nutrients at the moment, but that's not anything that can't be overcome. But the bottom line is that we need to synchronize better and there needs to be more order in terms of how we are growing our products. It's disturbing that as farmers, we continue to see a major influx of goods on the market of the same product each season. Previously, the farm halls, which are now drinking or beer halls in some parts of the country. And this is 
not the proper way to do things because those farm halls had a purpose and the purpose was that the farmers within those areas would be able to gather together at the beginning of the season with the data that we're supposed to access from AMA, and AMA does do reports as well as statistical um, departments within government. Although they may be a bit behind, but you certainly can gather enough information to see about the consumptions within the different areas or provinces. But Lindy, while you are there, mm -hmm. why have we not moved from the old ways of doing things? You mentioned that uh, you are third or fourth generation uh, in the agriculture in your own family. But surely you are not talking about what your grand or your great grandparents were doing, but you've moved on and you are uh, doing your agriculture uh, in realistic terms as uh, things happen nowadays. How can we move away from that so that you don't see someone who's got huge tracts of land, you know, parking their car by the street corner, selling a few maize cobs instead of utilizing uh, some of these opportunities? I think it comes from the fact that. Agriculture's face um, is only recently turning in terms of the youth taking an active interest. Until recent times, it had remained sort of profession for the older, more mature Zimbabwean. And I think the face of agriculture is now turning around. And with that comes innovation, comes technology, because now it's a younger sort of demographic that's entering into the industry versus the older generation. Because they were still using the methods that they are familiar with, which have worked incidentally, but there are also new ways now of doing things. Yeah, bringing a very interesting aspect that the youth have taken over while previously they would have shunned, you know, agriculture, they would have shunned, you know, living on a farm and so forth. I think that's a topic we'll have to tackle in the coming segments. That's Lindy Wey Mpofu Mashasha, who is an agriculturalist, who is also an entrepreneur and today on Economic Forum, she's sharing some ideas of how we can improve market access in agriculture. So join us in the second segment of Economic Forum. We are now in the second segment of Economic Forum, where today we are discussing market access to agriculture. And we have an agriculturist here, Lindiwe Mpofu Mashasha, who is an entrepreneur as well, and who is looking beyond the farm and saying, what then happens from the uh, farm, the produce that I've produced, where does it go to? So you need a lot of planning, you have to uh, schedule your program very well, and you want to go straight into that the scheduling. Yes, um, as I was saying in the last segment, that we have a situation where there is a major influx of the same product year in, year out in the different seasons. And that's because most of the farmers simply just open a companion chart book or um, a seasonal cropping book and think, okay, what's best to grow this season? This is what we can grow, and then they go ahead and grow it. And then we have multiple numbers of people growing the same thing. But previously, what used to happen is that at the farm halls, there used to be a discussion as to what are the tonnages that are required by the city, and there used to be a continuity schedule. But today it's on WhatsApp. Do you need to go to <laughs> they, they still discuss on WhatsApp. But it's not being discussed because <laughs> yes. if it was being discussed effectively, then we wouldn't see the overflow that we see. Because just to give a, a basic example, we would get together in a farm hall and we would decide that for the months of January, February, March, John and Lindy will grow this. This will, this will equate to so many tonnages. That can suffice to produce for the uh, um, city at that period. Then the following month, so-and-so has grown and they are now going to take over from the months. Now that's not happening because if it was happening, what we would see is continuity in the contracts. There's a lot of issues in terms of our exports because the Zimbabweans are not able to continuously um, provide uh, the, the product that they have signed up for because they grow it in one season. But yet farming is a very cooperative, it's a very family oriented sort of business. You cannot satisfy an order on your own. You really do need other farmers incorporated into it. As we've done our land reform, we now have individual smaller farms. Therefore, there is need for us to be able to cycle. So if we get a contract for, let's say, 1,500 tons for a certain uh, product, 
it would require a number of us to get together and decide that, okay, in these months, this group will grow it, in these months, this group will grow it. Because what will happen is that as the exports take place, we will be able to have continuity because on average uh, productivity for farming is anywhere growth period from one month to three months to six months depending on what you're growing but if we do not have that scheduling and if we do not have an understanding of what the quantities are that are required within the cities what do we grow each season as farmers how do we coordinate and cooperate you know a lot of people come over to farming and they treat it like every other business. Every other business is very competitive. Farming is one of the only um, areas where it's not so much about competition. It's really about working together to fulfill your orders. Lindy, you were talking about these authorities uh, like the Agricultural Marketing Authority as well as Simtrade and in the context of market accessibility. Just tell us whether they are easily accessible and why people uh, are not actually utilizing them? Is it because it is uh, difficult? There's no ease of doing business with them? No, and you know, quite surprisingly, I mean, the access is very open door policy. Um, ZimTrade is easily accessible, so is AMA. I think it's just more a matter of people just not going to the government office. There is a lot of you know, like you mentioned the WhatsApp groups earlier on, discussions are taken over on those WhatsApp platforms and they sort of end right there. It's your right as a Zimbabwean to be able to go to your local authority and request the assistance that you need or the help that you need. And if they are for any reason doing anything wrong, if there's a large number of people going there, it will soon be able to be rectified. But how does that happen if not a lot of people are utilizing the processes? Our country as a whole, we really need to do better in terms of understanding the acts that govern the different professions that we're in. As we talk about it, how many of our farmers understand our Land Reform Act, how, how many of them understand our Land Commission Act, Rural Settlement Acts, what does Zimtrade do? Because all of these government departments do have some sort of an act that tells you what it is that they're meant to do. So if you don't even understand what you are, have access to, how do you then utilize it effectively? So I really want to encourage people that it is your responsibility to go forward and access um, this information on regulation, on production, on marketing, on processing, get an understanding on permits, get an understanding of how do we export. Value chain marketing is very key for Zimbabwe because as you know, we don't have a lot of access to capital as individuals. However, there are other innovative financing structures that have come into play that make it uh, accessible for somebody to grow their farm. But you have to be willing to take the initiative and you also have to be willing, I think, to go the extra mile. It's not enough to go to the office and because you didn't get an answer you liked that day, then you've given up. I think you have to keep knocking and in life. It's a, it's, a, it's a requirement to keep knocking until you get to what you require. Yes. At times these entities do advertise uh, that they will be going to a certain country and they want to take their farmers there so that they can exhibit uh, what they have and so forth. What is the uptake of that, you know, to show that we have uh, Amakumbi or that we've got uh, Ipobola and so forth? I think quite a number of people are starting to take them up. I mean, I attended a Zimtrade function um, late last year and um, they were talking about their success stories and there were quite a number and their engagement has been quite um, impressive in terms of the countries that they've engaged in and like I said they've brought in the citrus deal with China and several others and they were pointing out the opportunities that are available in agriculture but like I say if we as farmers are not going to take the initiative to then follow through because Zimtrade will go as a government authority and d d carry out their mandate but the second part is the people have to take interest in going to find out about the fulfillment of those mandates. There seems to be a very negative connotation amongst our people that, oh, government, this and that. But government is there to help you. They are there to create an environment for you to operate in and be successful. And if there's anything that is blocking that success, the onus still remains on you to be able to initiate a conversation to make them aware that this policy is not working because it does this. It is the individual who is on the ground, who's operating the business, that can ultimately bring the other outlook or the other view that they might need to look at as government. The onus 
this is on us you can say it that again that's uh, lindy way of Mashasha, who is our guest today. We are talking about some of the opportunities that can be fully utilized, that uh, are made available by government in order to improve our market accessibility. So join us in the third and final segment of Economic Forum. We are now in the third and final segment of Economic Forum where we are discussing access uh, to markets in agriculture and our guest is Lindy Wempofu Mashlasha who is an agriculturalist but she is also multifaceted because she is also uh, into mining and other ventures. Lindy as we talk about agriculture, uh, recently His Excellency the President addressing you know, a summit in Senegal said we are being driven by village wisdom in our agriculture. And in that regard, we are doing well. How do you understand that statement in the context of all these things that we've been talking about? I understood it to mean because he did give an explanation thereafter of what happened with the wheat season. And the reason Zimbabwe was successful with the wheat harvest was because we did take into account the stats that were used in terms of how much wheat do we utilize and need as a nation. And that was then translated to um, the actual tonnages that we require to grow. And these were given to people to grow individually. So it was small numbers of people making up large tonnages, and which is what I was referencing earlier, that farming is very much largely based on cooperation. Without cooperation, it's very difficult to be successful in farming. Of course, the larger entities can be um, successful individually, but with the type of dynamic that we have in Zimbabwe, it does become necessary for us to be able to utilize our land effectively by working cooperatively using village wisdom because village wisdom and villages work together and coordinate and cooperate. Why do we use village wisdom? Enter the youth, uh, as you said earlier on, that they've shown a big interest in agriculture. Tell us more. That's of interest because in the past they would shun farming, they would shun even doing agricultural courses and so forth. And you're saying uh, you, uh, you are categorized as a youth, Lindy, you are uh, into farming and agriculture big time. Tell us more. This is definitely an exciting time, I think, to be alive for any youth or anyone who is interested in farming because I think Africa, Zimbabwe has really come into its own in, in terms of understanding the vast opportunities that lie in um, agriculture. And not only that, let's remember that one of the quickest wealth um, ways of creating or generating wealth for yourself is through farming. Farming, as long as you have land, if you don't have water or a borehole, you have rain. You can make something happen for yourself. The possibilities of how you can capitalize yourself on agriculture have now finally come to the forefront for youth. Because I think for many years, the discussion was agriculture, but not the figures attached to agriculture. So now there has been, a, I think, an awakening of just how effective and how quickly you can make money from agriculture. So that has um, sort of championed the youth now to take in more active interest and to explore the opportunities available to them, which is why I'm here pushing the fact that don't just look at your farming business at a basic level. Take it to the next level of understanding the markets, understand the international markets, understand the international requirements. Because as you build your business, it's important for you to start by understanding where am I going? Where am I heading to? So I think a lot of people just think, okay, I'm going to grow this and then that's it. You need to understand the, 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 the gradual process of how you plan to grow your business. Yes. How about access to capital? Is it an excuse of not even venturing uh, into agriculture as a young person so that you can also make money? Uh, I see other young people are even utilizing their rural homes in order to grow uh, some, uh, uh, some of the crops that can actually earn them money. On this program, quite often we have Mr. Bezel Nyabadza explaining about the value of garlic, ginger and turmeric. Yes. Look, um, capital is always going to be an issue. I think for us as Africans, we've long since had a, an issue of access to capital. 
However, agriculture is one of those areas, just like what you saw with what happened in mining. Did the youth or the Makorokoza have capital? They just simply went and they dug. They dug, used the geological knowledge they have to access the belt. Similar to agriculture. As I said before, if I have a hectare, for example, it's an issue of getting myself that hoe and getting myself that shovel to dig and clear my land. From there, put down a crop that I know is going to have returns. We've got the presidential inputs that are successful. People are getting minimums of maybe five, I mean, at worst, you're going to get maybe five tons. So at five tons, at sitting at a rate of 300 or so for a ton, you already have enough for you to be able to start to incrementally grow yourself. It's not an overnight affair, and I appreciate that, but the fact is that it can still be done. So this is why I'm here to encourage youth out there that at the end of the day, with or without the capital that you think you require, it is possible to start because agriculture is God-given. Rain will still be able to sustain a crop that you grow. As long as you've dug the ground, as long as you've used manure, you can use organic methods to get yourself that first crop, to get yourself kick-started. There are a lot of people, our parents did that. Did they have banks in the 60s? But I'm sure you went to school and you were going to school of agriculture, as it were, isn't it? So I think that um, on one side, definitely there's a way to go around it. But in terms of uh, is there a capital available, there have been various programs. There have been various banks that have been created that are targeted at youth, that are targeted at women. And um, it's necessary for us to utilize those banks. I know that there are banks that have been availed um, that are created for the sole purpose of certain target margin groups. There have been complaints from youth that they have not been able to access the money that they feel they should. But again, I feel that it's a conversation that the youth also need to have with the bank. The Ministry of um, SMEs, um, Women Affairs, is responsible for those banks. So it's also an engagement by the youth groups to go to the ministry to talk about what challenges are they experiencing and how can these be reviewed. I know, Lindy, you can go on and on, <laughs> but that's Lindy Wempo from Ashlasha, an agriculturist who has been sharing some ideas about market accessibility in agriculture, how we can utilize the services that are made available by government, how we can actually understand the processes that we have to follow in order to benefit from them. So what remains is to thank you, Lindy, uh, for coming uh, to the program Economic Forum. If you have missed some of the episodes of Economic Forum, you can view them on our YouTube channel, which is Economic Forum Zimbabwe. So on behalf of Lindy Wempofu, Mashasha, our guest, and the production crew, this is John Masugu wishing you happy farming.